I gotta get this right, huh? What's going on, guys? It's Rich. I'm here with episode one of the new Behind the Counter, BTC 2.0. I want to welcome you all and thank you for your support. I posted that teaser video uh, earlier in the week and uh, it was met with uh, resounding applause, I suppose, even though I can't hear you uh, on the Twitter. Uh, but I really appreciate the support again, and uh, thank you for the long times, and uh, thank you for the new people that I'm sure are going to check this out and maybe hate it. Who knows? So let me give you a little backstory. Uh, my name is Rich, a uh, lifelong comic book fan. I used to do a show on GFQ Network called Behind the Counter. Uh, surprisingly to me, and uh, I think to a couple other people I chatted uh, about this with, uh, the last episode of that original show was from 2014, and uh, we were 100 plus episodes in. Uh, over six years later, here I am bringing it back, uh, and I really appreciate the support. Again, I, I keep saying it because it's true. Um, you know, going forward, we're going to have some guests, we're going to have some interviews. We got a cool interview today that we're going to get to in a little bit, and uh, you know, we're just chatting comics uh some people are going to pop by uh some people that you don't know some people that you might know uh some people that you want to know uh, and we're going to have some fun free-flowing conversations as always you know uh, you can find these on youtube uh btc rich x is my channel uh it's going to be posted on gfqnetwork.com and it's going to be all over twitter at btc rich let's jump into it so uh, Future State is kind of like a big deal right now with DC Comics, right? Uh, what you basically had, and I think there was a little bit of a, not a miscommunication, but a misunderstanding with uh, folks when it comes to what's being released and what's not. Um, a few months ago, DC announced that the future of DC Comics is going to be this thing called Future State. Uh, it's not a reboot. It's not a soft reboot. It's not a relaunch either. Uh, what Future State is, is stories from the DC universe that take place in an alternate future. Uh, how is it an alternate future? Well, at the end of uh, Batman Death Metal, a uh, little miniseries done by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo, we got keyed into We the Audience, We the Audience, We the Audience. I'm going to keep saying it. Uh, we the Audience got keyed into different worlds that the DC heroes inhabit. So the future state stuff is kind of one of these else worlds where all this cool stuff is happening. And I, for one, dig it. Uh, the strongest books for me have been the Batman books. Uh, I'm really digging the story of uh, the magistrate and how they outlawed uh, the capes and uh, Batman could possibly be dead, eh, but he's not. Spoiler alert. And uh, it seems like the capes are on the run. The Bat family's on the run, but they're starting to fight back. I really want to see where this goes. Uh, great team of writers and artists. This is kind of a cool thing. That happens in mainstream com comics every so often where you'll get creative teams that can kind of go off the rails as far as what they want to do without the editors, um, you know, pounding into them the standard uh, big two comic book fair. Uh, I think we're getting a lot more loose storytelling ideas in the last couple of years as far as like major comic books go. Um, DC's killing it right now this future state stuff is going to last for a couple of months and that looks like it's going to go back to normal quote unquote uh but i would like to see some elements uh carry over from these books so far you know like again i'm really digging the bad books on this comics have been banging these last couple of years uh even during the pandemic you know when people thought that comic books were going to go away forever you can't kill comic books uh as a lifelong comic book fan i love going to the store every single week picking up my stack of books shout out to best comics uh Great comic store out in uh, Long Island, New York, uh, bestcomics.com if you want to check them out. They take care of me every single week. I used to work there many years ago. Uh, a lot of fun. Probably one of the best jobs I've ever had. And, uh, you know, through that job, I got to read so much stuff and got informed with various, various comics that I probably wouldn't have read unless I worked at a comic book store. Uh, that being said, I think 2020, going into 2021, we're having like kind of like a little bit of a renaissance of comic books as far as, you know, your DC books. We've just talked about future state. Uh, Marvel books are killing it right now. You have some great creators on tons of flagship books. Chip Zdarsky taking over Daredevil. Fantastic. I'd love to have him on the show. Um, you have Thor uh, with um, Donnie Cates and Nick Klein taking over for Jason Aaron, whose Thor run was pretty damn epic in, in in its own right um arguably one of my favorite comics comic runs in the modern era uh 
new Thor's kicking ass. Uh, the X Men books under Jonathan Hickman have been great. Uh, I'm really enjoying all of them, and I think the standout the standout that I wanted to mention this week was Cable from Jerry Duggan and Phil Noto. Uh, Cable nails all the nostalgia of the X Force comics in the '90s for me, but it doesn't um, patronize the audience. I think there's a lot of tongue in cheek elements of it. Uh, Cable, uh, who has been resurrected as a teenager, which we've never seen before, um, tackling the issues that plague the X universe within Krakoa. And, you know, he's on the hunt for uh, some missing uh, mutant babies. So the storyline is very interesting right now. And it's kind of like, if you want to pick it up as like a standalone, it works. Uh, uh, the X-Men books just wrapped up like a big crossover so it's kind of like uh, after the crossover is over you're back to status quo with the rest of the main x-men books but i can't recommend cable enough strange adventures is another one of those dc books that i just love from top to bottom uh as a huge adam strange fan i think it's refreshing that uh tom king is taking such a new spin on the character uh for those of you who haven't picked it up strange adventures uh it's along the lines of the Mr. Miracle book that Tom King put out a couple of years ago in the regard that it takes place in the DC universe, but it's kind of like an offshoot. I think this is a black label book, which is kind of like their mature readers line, but not really, but it is. Um, I, I still don't know what to make of it. It, it kind of reminds me of when Marvel did Marvel Knights and it was kind of mature, but not really, but you also didn't know what to make of it. Um, and I think the that works perfectly for a character like Adam Strange. Adam Strange was a uh, character from way back in the day who would show up in the proper DCU um, a tons of times over the last cent half a century, right? Uh, Silver Age character, uh, kind of like um, DC's version of John Carter uh, from the uh, the novels of the same name, um, Princess of Mars, etc., where. The character himself, Adam Strange, would get beamed to this planet Ron, Ran, Ron, Ran, whatever, uh, through the Zeta Beam, and he would have a limited time on the planet, and he would have all these adventures. Kind of like John Carter, when he would transport to Mars, he would have a bunch of adventures, fall in love, save the day, etc., and then get beamed back to Earth. So this takes place in, I think, the modern DCU, where Adam Strange is back on earth and he's heralded as a hero. He's got a book out and uh, it turns out that there's a lot of political intrigue. I don't want to say espionage, but there's a lot of political intrigue as far as Adam Strange coming back to earth, what he did on Ron, because the book is kind of painting him as a war criminal, which, you know, when you take, when you really distill those adventure elements from a story, it's kind of interesting how you could easily write a war criminal story about uh, a sci-fi hero from the Silver Age of DC Comics, right? It kind of makes sense. Uh, the book itself is written by Tom King with art by Mitch Gerards and Doc Shainer. Uh, very, very fantastic creative team. And it's a real nail biter. Uh, Adam Strange, again, was always one of those characters that was kind of on the periphery in the DC universe. Um, he showed up in pretty much, like I think, most of the DC properties, uh, the, animated, the Justice League animated series. He was on Krypton. But for the most part, I don't want to say he was a throwaway character, but he was one of those characters that nobody has really sunk their teeth into in a major way like this you know it kind of reminds me of what grant morrison did with animal man uh all those years ago where you kind of take like a quote-unquote b-level character and really put the boots to him as far as creative energy goes you know um and i think tom king is a great writer to do that um mr miracle i thought was fantastic again took a b-level character made this really amazing 12 issue series with uh, that I think is going to stand the test of time, to be honest, and it's probably going to be one of the best um, DC trade paperbacks to have come out. With, like it, you're you're going to look at that book in the next ten years and be like, now that's that's a great comic, right? Um, I think Adam, the Strange Adventures right now is kind of going into the same direction where I think after it wraps up, we're at issue eight right now. Uh, after this book wraps up, people are going to look at it and go, wow, like this is a testament to that character 
goes right up on the shelf with Mr. Miracle, with your Animal Man, uh, you know, and stuff like that. And also he's doing that with Rorschach also. And, you know, say what you want about the Watchmen property. But at this point, I really don't mind seeing more Watchmen stuff as long as it's written well. You know, and, you know, you can complain all day that, oh, this is not what Alan Moore wanted. But guess what? Alan Moore probably doesn't care at this point. Issue 8 of Strange Adventures came out this week. It's going to issue 12. It's a miniseries. Uh, I think much like Mr. Miracle, when it wrapped up, I'm going to pick up the trade and hand it off to people who want to read something cool. Uh, I'm going to definitely do the same thing with Strange Adventures. I think it's very well written. It's going to look gorgeous on the shelf when it's all collected. And I think it's going to be one of those books, too, where it's like, hey, you know, if you want to read a uh, kind of mainstream comic with somebody that's not named Batman or Superman, but kind of see what all the fuss is about about comic books, I think I would hand them Strange Adventures. You know, it's kind of cool. You don't really need to know much going into it, you know. And plus, if you want to do some research, you can check out the Internet, right? That's what it's for. Uh, another cool thing that dropped this week was the Kong vs. Godzilla trailer. Uh, I'm sure you've heard people talk about it ad nauseum, but these are my two cents. Um, I think you're going to get a team-up of Kong and Godzilla versus a Mecha Ghidorah. If you remember the end of King of Monsters, the Ghidorah head was in the warehouse uh, with the monarch scientists, I believe. I might be wrong about that. I think they're a monarch scientist, right? Um, the bad guys, right? So... I think they're going to take that Ghidorah head and you're going to get a Mecha Ghidorah as the big baddie in this movie. And it's going to be cool, man. You're going to have Godzilla versus King Kong, probably versus this Mecha Ghidorah. And uh, you know what? I want to see Bad Boys 4 starring uh, King Kong and Godzilla. I don't know about you guys, but that would do it for me. Let's talk about crime. Not real crime. Not true crime. Uh, is there a distinction between real crime and true crime? You go to the library and you go, hey, where's your real crime section? And they go, uh, you mean true crime? Yeah, whatever, dude. Just give me a book on murder. Um, crime comics have a huge history. And there is nothing more fun sometimes than reading a noir style comic in the modern day. Crime comics are a lot of fun, especially when they're done right. And that Texas blood was done right. Uh, the first six issues came out through Image Comics over the last year. And today I got Chris Condon on the horn uh, to talk about his work. Uh, I'm pretty excited about this interview. Great guy. And uh, he was kind enough to take the time out of his day to talk to me. Check it out. And what's up, guys? How you doing? Uh, this is Rich. And I'm here with Chris Condon. Chris Condon, uh, writer of Brutal Dark and the writer of that Texas Blood out from Image Comics. How you doing, Chris? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Good, man. Thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. Um, you mentioned that you're a Jersey guy, right? I am, yeah. Did you grow up, did you grow up in Jersey? <laughs> Born and raised, yeah. Yeah, I grew up in, uh, in Matatu, New Jersey. Um, it's a very small town. It's two square miles. Um, they, they call us the Brainy Borough because apparently that's where a lot of professors lived i guess they worked in either Rutgers or wherever but uh yeah it was like 15 minutes from Rutgers, 15 minutes from staten island sort of in the middle of everything but you know nothing too central to it aside from the fact that it's it was a nice place to grow up i guess that's cool so no like you haven't lived in any other state just straight jersey your whole life no california okay california, california. so cool. uh and I honestly, California is very, it's, it's a very easy move for a New Jersey person because it's essentially New Jersey with palm trees. Okay. Uh, <laughs> if, if you boil it down, I feel like that's a very apt description of, of uh, California, especially okay. Los Angeles. Fair um, enough. I'm going to have to ask my, uh, my buddies that, that have, have gone like by coastal uh, about that. Um, so growing up in Jersey, living in California, how do you write something like that Texas blood, which is so firmly entrenched in the South with an amazing voice to it? Uh, well, I mean, I, a lot of what I, I tend to do in my, my spare time and just, you know, hanging out with people, I, I try to listen as much as I, as much as I talk and, you know, interact with people, but I try to listen to people and I, I love hearing people from, you know, parts of the world that I, or parts of the country that I don't necessarily talk to often. And 
people from Texas are very interesting people to listen to. They just have like a different pace to everything, including just the way that they talk and the, the way that they absorb things and the way that they, uh, you know, think about things and what's important to their, them in their lives. Um, and actually being out in California, I had uh, befriended somebody, uh, their name is Malcolm Duncan, and uh, his family and he are from uh, from West Texas. They're from Fort Davis, Texas, which is right next to Marfa, Texas, which is very much what that Texas blood is based off of. So uh, sort of my experience with them and visiting them and, uh, you know, absorbing that part of the world was really where that that story and the people and the place came from. That's pretty cool. It seems like, you know, the story I think resonated with a lot of people. And like, for me personally, like I'm a huge comic fan. And uh, I think I saw like a quick, it was either in the back of an image book yeah. where um, it, it was like a quick advertisement. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to pick this up. I'm a sucker for like those Ed Brubaker, Sean Phillips books. Um, this was kind of in the same vein, at least for me. And I, I, I'm sure you've heard that mm -hmm. like a ton of times, you know, um, it's an honor to hear things like that because I mean I, I grew up reading those books so it was anybody who says that I know that Jacob Phillips is the artist <laughs> right, right. Book, but aside from that when when people say things like oh this is like you know Brew Baker and I'm like oh my god like that is like the nicest thing I mean people say the opposite as well but you know, <laughs> say, you know comparing me to to a great writer like that cause it's that's it's really an honor to hear listen it's true i mean like the like that first book like uh issues one through six you could easily fit that into like the criminal universe you know like if if you wanted to like name names um but obviously it's its own thing um now how did you go from a to b as far as that book goes you know from like concept to completion and is there gonna be more like how how long do you see the book going um, yeah, there's definitely going to be more, um, it, from concept to completion. So it was originally a short film, mm -hmm. uh, which was the first issue, um, which, so it, I wanted to make a feature film. It was called that Texas blood, which is the story of issues two through six. So I wanted to make that, um, which was based off of a viewing of a Paul Newman movie called HUD. Cool. Uh, I sort of was like, what happened, what would happen if this character, you know, left and then came back and, you know, was brought, dragged back down into all the craziness of his, his past life that he had gotten rid of. Um, so that was where that came from. And so in trying to get that started, um, I was talking to my friend, uh, Malcolm, and we were trying to figure out ways to get, get funding for the film. And so uh, Whiplash had just come out and um that that was uh, they made a short film for that mm -hmm. which a scene from the film they just filmed that and uh, then released that as as the short film got funding uh, so we thought that'd be a smart idea to kind of do the same idea but we did uh what we did was we thought it'd be cool to do a just complete non sequitur with one of the characters who's in the feature and so that was the first issue of the comic oh. really but it was a short film and then, so I ended up liking that character of Joe Bob so much. I was like, I just want to do the whole thing about him. So I wrote a whole different feature starring uh -huh. called Passes Prologue. And so that's also going to be a storyline at some point. Um, but yeah, once uh, I tried to get it going for about a year and it's just hard to get funding for, especially for a short film. Um, and especially when you don't have the money yourself to put up. Uh, so I just had gotten Jacob to do concept art before to try to get funding. But he, and that, about a year later, hit him up again and said, hey, do you want to just do this as a comic book? And he hadn't had a comic at that point. And he said, yes. So we did it. And that really is, uh, that's the story of how it came about. But yeah, uh, we're coming back in June, I believe, with issue seven. Um, it's called, it's a storyline called Eversol 1981. And it takes place in 1981. It bounces between present and 1981. And it's uh, another story of a dark moment in this county's history. Uh, and sort of going off, bouncing off of the end of issue six, uh, Joe Bob is sort of left uh, questioning things. And why, why, is, why do these things keep happening? Um, things like that. And, and in searching for answers, he goes diving back into the past. 
and uh, revisits one of the most uh, one of one of his biggest moments uh, in terms of his uh, his growth as a as a deputy um, in the making of what he is today. All right, cool. So so it looks like that the the next chapter is going to be Joe Bob as the focal. Do you see Joe Bob as the focal point going forward for the book with all this stuff I happening see, around him? Kind of. I I see him as an anchor. Uh, okay. he appears in every story. He's not necessarily the lead of every story, but I th- I think that people have made themselves clear because some people didn't like that Randy was the focus of issues two through six. Huh, okay, to be Joe Bob. Um, but yeah, it's 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 definitely Joe Bob is our like I said, he's our anchor. He's our uh, he's our chorus almost you know like we follow him he kind of leads us through the county uh and and so i yeah i would say that he's our anchor more than anything um there's definitely going to be moments where he's partly in a book there's an issue coming up that i've written which will probably it should be coming out christmas of next year in which joe bob literally shows up in the last panel and that's it okay cool but he's in it (laughs) so again he's like our anchor he he pulls it back down and says, no, this is a story that takes place in that Texas blood, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean like that, the last issue, like issue six, uh, great, like a really excellent, uh, kind of bookend to that, that first part of the book, you know, like introduced a bunch of new stuff. Uh, are you going to go back to Randy at all now that, you know, like the last, the last thing you see of Randy is him being taken away in the squad car. I, there might be like, a Batman and Robin moment where like the Mr. Freeze costume is hanging. Okay. <laughs> and all that. But I, I haven't, uh, I haven't decided if Randy's going to come back as far as I'm concerned at the moment, his story is kind of over. Okay. Um, but definitely the, the impact of what happened in those issues is going to continue to resurface. That's very cool, man. Um, who would you, since, I mean, like you're obviously a film guy, who would you, if, if somebody took uh, that Texas butt right now and put it on the big screen, give me off, off the top of your head, uh, or if you've thought about it, give me your casting. Oh, uh, I, li- <laughs> I, I think that Jacob would like Sam Elliott. I think that my casting is a little weirder. Okay. I like, I like Sam Neill. Uh, okay. Sam Neill for Joe Bob. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I think he'd be an interesting, tr- I think he would bring something interesting to it. Not yeah. what you might expect, you know? I'll agree with that. I, plus he's getting like a little older and like wiser. You yeah. know, I think he could bring some kind of, some gravitas to that character. Yeah. I think that he's, he's got interesting eyes, you know? And I feel like that's, okay. like, that's a thing that is important to Joe Bob. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Um, also little side note, I want to compliment you on the QR code for the soundtrack oh. <laughs> in the issue like was that your idea or like how did that come about yeah so i i had i'm a big fan of the writer michael shabon okay and uh he doesn't put a qr code in his books but what he does is on his instagram or twitter he posts like this is a playlist mm-hmm. of everything i listened to while i was writing the book whatever it okay. is graph avenue or moon glow or whatever and so that was kind of where that came from and i just I pitched it to jacob as like an extra thing that we could add to the comic would be maybe maybe i can make like a playlist that can kind of go along with it um so that's pretty much where that came from i got it i'm re- kind of i'm fixing fixing the one for seven through 11 or i think it's through 11 at this point uh which is sort of uh it bounced between like 80s music and like country music so okay just, yeah um, thanks the uh, the issue six one was great. I, it's like right out right at the top was the Marty Robbins song, and I was yeah. like, I feel like I'm the only adult I know that has that album <laughs> on loop, like generally, you know. And I'm also glad that my wife doesn't hate me for it because like yeah. I'll, I'll throw that on sometimes, and she's like, "You're listening to this again?" I'm like, "It's awesome." <laughs> I felt like that song was like a good place setting, you know that that and the Vertigo. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Kind of their interesting placement. Uh, and I, I'm trying to get the same sort of feel for for issue seven. So I'm trying to figure out what the right combination is. 
Yeah. So is, is this going to be your, like your creator own project for the time being is going to be this, that, that uh, is going to be this comic or are you going to yeah. do a couple of more things here and there? I mean, I'd, I'd like to branch out and do some other things. I definitely have other ideas, but mm-hmm. at the moment, A, this, t- this is taking up a lot of my time because it's just, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, there's um, the way that I sort of write is that I sort of, I was talking to a friend of mine and he, he was like, you know, he's, he's read about writers who spend a lot of their time writing, napping. Okay. <laughs> uh, like, I, I wouldn't say that's necessarily true, but there are days where I'll like sit down with the computer and type for, I don't know how long. And then there's mm-hmm. other days where I get like a page done and it just, it's just cause it didn't feel right, you know? And so I'll, like, right. I really want things to feel authentic. So like, it takes me a while to come up with this stuff. And I don't know if it, it, I hope it's good enough. <laughs> like when people read it and they like it, but uh, I, I, it takes me a while sometimes. So yeah, I, at the moment, this is kind of the main thing. But there's another project I hopefully will get to. I, it's not with uh, Jacob, but it, I don't, I don't know when my the other artist is going to have time to to do it. So that's kind of what I'm waiting on at, in terms of that is just the other artist availability. Um, and that, I feel like that's a lot of comics is trying to find the availability of the time and also the money, you know, yeah, yeah. everything costs money at the end of the day. So it's trying to figure out all these different elements and figure out the exact right uh, configuration to make it happen. Yeah. From, from what I gather and from what I hear from like the friends I have in the industry, it's like, it's a, it needs to be a perfect storm to get something on the shelf the way you want it. Yeah. And you know, I, we were really lucky <laughs> with uh, that text explode where we got an image, which was, uh, I mean, we, we didn't advertise us as being, you know, from, from one of the members, uh, you know, the, the Phillips, Phillips and Brubaker crew. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> uh we just we sent it out uh, we hadn't heard back for a couple months and we were lucky mm-hmm. enough to hear back and eric stevenson reached out and said hey if you haven't found a home for this yet we'd be happy to have it it's like oh well okay because we had heard from a couple and they were no's and then there was one that was like a maybe but then they went silent on us actually after like a year and a half after we already like been on the schedule and image oh, then wow. they reached out and said yes mm-hmm. but it's like at that point it's like i what do you want us to do? Just wait a year and a half? But that's what, you know, that's, I think, the nature of the industry. <laughs> Unless if you're with, you know, a, a bigger name uh, publisher. Right. I think I think your book fits perfectly with Image. You know, like, just the yeah. aesthetic, the way it's put together, the writing style. I, I think you guys, like, again, as a fan, I think you guys found, like, a really good home for the book. Yeah. Well, I mean, Image is my favorite. I mean, I'm not just saying this because we have an Image comic, but Image yeah. is my favorite. Uh, image is great. Uh, no, uh, image is I'll put favorite. a giant graphic just coming down <laughs> when, I, when I edit this. <laughs> uh, you know, a- Image is my favorite mm-hmm. publisher, uh, especially at the moment, but uh, my favorite publisher, period, in terms of what they're putting out. I mean, you have all the great Zadarsky, Chip Zadarsky books. Oh yeah, Stillwater, and uh, I mean all the stuff that they're even coming out with now. But I mean, the mm. Witches was through Image, and I, I like Undiscovered Country a lot. I yeah. just read, finished reading. I caught up with all the issues of that. Very dense book, but I, I like it a lot. I, and especially now, you know, you're in lockdown and everything that's going on with the country. It's an interesting read. Um, but yeah, there's all these these great books i'm probably forgetting a thousand of them but i mean well uh homesick pilots is great as well yeah i just read issue two yesterday actually it's a lot of fun i'm 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 really curious to see where it goes i mean like i don't know about you but like whenever do you do you pick up books weekly or do you like uh go today (laughs) no honestly i just came back like about a half an hour ago uh it's funny because like again like a lot of a lot of creators i know like because of the time constraints they curate like their stacks where it's like, you know, instead of picking up like 20 books a week, it's like uh, maybe five or six, you know, cause, cause of the time, the, the time issue, well, you know? Yeah. I mean, I sort of, I'm happy to have a pile, you know what I okay, mean? Yeah. And I literally have a pile. There's like a pile like this still. Like, All right on. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, there's certain things that I'll be like, 
I want to read this now. And then there's certain books like Hellboy books that I'll leave. I'm like, I could wait. I don't need to read those right now. Mm-hmm. Like when I get to them, it'll be a treat, you know? Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's books like that. Uh, the Zdarsky Daredevil run is one of those that I'm like, I can leave it for like five issues and then I'll come and read all five or whatever. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so yeah, I pick up like, I pick up a bunch of stuff. I, I have been more curatorial though uh, of late just because there's so much stuff coming out. And if I go every week and spend the amount of money that I, yeah. with the amount of things that I want to get, I'm going to be spending uh, like a hundred bucks a week or whatever. So. Oh, forget it. It's, uh, it's like, but you know, like coming from a comic creator like yourself, like in the last two years, like haven't books been just pretty damn fantastic. You know, it really has been a, a great time to be a comic reader. Uh, I mean, I I've been, I was sort of skeptical of Future State as well, and I really liked a lot of the books that I've read from that. Um, I mean, in, yeah. in general, it's it's like almost every publisher. I mean, you got Vault, you got TKO, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, all these. I mean, Red Fork was a favorite um, of last year. I really liked Red Fork, and so th- yeah, there's all these. I, I mean, it's 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 weird to be in on the wave of like you know new creators coming in, but it's 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 it really is a sort of magical time in comics right now. Um, I I feel like just also because there, there's this sort of lack of entertainment in terms of TV and movies at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, so I feel like people are sort of gravitating more towards comics because it's it's almost like you're getting your fix of a movie or a tv show because it's got that that visual quality yeah. that you don't get with a you know pros uh, piece but um yeah i don't know it's it's really it's really cool and a lot of great stuff is coming out there i don't know why again like what the algorithm is or why everybody's you know hitting the same stride together but it really is great um yeah yeah dan, yeah. dan waters alex packnadil uh rom v all these great writers out there. I think Ron V is one of the most interesting writers out there. Oh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Like the future state stuff that he was doing is, is pretty good, man. You know, like, I, and uh, not to make it like all about like the DC stuff, but like, you know, I'm very pleasantly surprised by it as well. You know? Yeah. I, I am sort of, I was like, Oh great. Another reboot. <laughs> right. 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 I th- I thought it was like, fine after you know flashpoint just like stop <laughs> like yeah. we did it we did it uh but it's it's cool i don't know i'm, I'm digging it. i also like the approach with it which is that you know let's give new creators a chance to to have their voice you know yeah it was, i don't know i kind of love it if you uh before i before i ask you the, the next question though just like one little thing about like the future state stuff uh i do is your is your comic store like kind of like a little old school like a lot of older customers or are you is it more of like uh not like a hipster store but like is it more modern you know no it's definitely like an old school store yeah same here so like today's a good example i went and then uh you see all the regulars all the time and um there's one guy who i see every single week was pointing at all the future state books going this is garbage this is garbage this is garbage this is a money grab this is a money grab i don't know why i should read this and then he left (laughs) and i'm like dude like give it a chance please you know yeah no i have friends like that too i Mm -hmm. i have a friend out in la who's who's so skeptical of anything that's like mainstream uh yeah but it and it, it yeah it's just sort of like I I was like kind of bummed that that the new Batman first issue was like an eight dollar issue. I'm like, you're trying yeah. to get new readers. Why is it eight dollars? Uh, I understand that it's like three stories in one, but at the same time, again, it's like an eight dollar issue. You know? Yeah, it's, it's about that. And he's like, oh, it's all trash. And I'm like, all right. All right man. <laughs> it's not. It's it's an argument. Like when I see books like that, one, I'm always like, ooh, I'm glad I get a discount. And two. Yeah. Like this eight dollar book is definitely not for a kid to come into the store and say like, "Here's my eight bucks, sir. Give me my one comic." You know, it's definitely geared towards like an older audience. Yeah. No, absolutely. I I'm I'm like a minor figure collector as well. And oh, cool. I've noticed, I've noticed that that is a really bad thing as well in in terms of I, a friend of mine is really into like WWE 
action figures. He's really sure. into. Yeah. So whenever I go for my like tw- two times a month trip to Target to get like mm. chores done and stuff to get all the the cleaning products and like whatever grocery stuff we need in my in my house, like I'll go and I'll like walk down the toy aisle and the shelves are empty. And then like you go, you just go on like eBay or Google or whatever you type in whatever the thing was that you know either he was looking for or I was looking for, and it's like five available from this one seller for like three times the amount that it was available in the store and it's like oh so they literally just went in and just went and yep. just took all, of it, all everything off the shelf and now they're just reselling it i hate it and apparently yeah, yeah. that happened with that daredevil 25 issue you yeah know? i was lucky enough to be on a podcast with some fellas in in ireland oh wow and they said we have one we're not selling it at a hiked up price so i'll just send you one Oh wow! Okay, because well, my comic shop actually sold out of it. So yeah. I, so yeah, so my my comic shop actually puts his stuff out on Tuesday. Smart. So smart. <laughs> uh, and so a lot of times I'll go on Tuesdays, but if I don't, sometimes he doesn't pull the books for me because he assumes I'm going to be in on Tuesday. Right, right, right. And so that's what that was the case mm. of that. And I was like, oh, oh okay, well this kind of worked out, but. Imagine if it didn't, I would, you know, be stuck with either like the second printing, which is fine. I don't really care about the collectability of it necessarily. I like the stories. Um, so I would have been fine with the second printing, but these guys were awesome enough to send me, you know, this yeah. issue. No, I hear you. I, I hear you. That's uh, I, I always tell my wife, I'm like, she's always like, you know, you're going to get your books. And I'm like, yeah, but I get like a little bit of that nerd anxiety of like, what if they don't have this one? You know? And it's, I think that kind of goes hand in hand. We're like, I'm the same way. I don't mind if I get a second printing, but why are you selling out of this? You know, like um, I think the most recent uh, issue in my memory, I want to say amazing Spider-Man 55 that had that really nice Patrick Gleason cover, the black and white one, the secondary market, uh, exploded when that came out because I think people thought something happened in the issue that really didn't happen and it got scooped up like crazy. Um, and I, I remember going into the store that Wednesday morning and they were like, yeah, it's gone. Here's yours. Cause you, you have a pull list, but it's completely sold out. People have been calling all day, yeah. you know? Um, let's see here. I'm going to ask a couple more and then we'll wrap up if that's cool with you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you could, if this is something that you've thought about, would you, what character, what major character would you love to write from Marvel or DC or even, even an image character? Uh, geez. Uh, I, the <laughs> character that I would really like, well, I don't know why. I, I mean, I feel like I would like to write, I would like to try to write Superman or the okay. flash. Uh, I love the Flash. I'm a big Flash person. Um, but I, the, mm. the the ones that I like really want to write would be I would really want to do Buona Beast. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I have this idea for Buona Beast story, and I really hope one day I get to do it. Um, and I also have like a one shot story idea for a Scarecrow thing. Okay. But um, it, I, I wouldn't say that there are any. Uh, major characters that I, that I long to write you know I, I sort of feel bad for anybody who has to write Batman you know I love yeah. Batman but I just it's so hard to, to even try to think of how do I do something that they you know every time that like a great writer touches it they just they put their stamp on it and I feel bad for anybody who follows it up you know um, sometimes they do amazingly well but sometimes mm-hmm. you know it's just whatever they're telling it just isn't striking the fan base the right way or whatever i don't know but yeah go ahead sorry no no no. I, I didn't mean to cut you off go ahead no i just yeah i feel bad for him to do that but I, superman's a character that i love and i feel like i could probably do okay with him and sort of maybe writing that texas blood and sort of character that joe bob is kind of have that idea of like the sort of down homeness of him from kansas a uh-huh. little bit. Yeah, so I feel like I could probably write something okay there, but I I don't really have any uh, need to write anything. If it came up, that'd be awesome, obviously. 
Um, right, right. You're not going to turn it down, but you're not going to actively look for it. Yeah, exactly. That's cool. Uh, do you miss the convention circuit at all? Like, were you ever like a Comic Con guy or yeah. anything like that? <laughs> you know, I really do because I was I was really looking forward to, like, I don't, it was like having the book out and like trying like interacting with fans and stuff. Mm-hmm just people and just hearing hearing what their thoughts were and seeing the looks on their faces when they would walk by the the table and either not stop or if they stopped like i feel like that would have been a really interesting thing to have that we were just sort of not allowed to have last year and most likely this year uh yeah i do miss it i i i loved going down artist alley you know talking to people that i loved uh and just you know just picking their brain and talking with them i never i honestly at that point i don't think i had any ideas or anything to actually get into comics but i was i I love comics so i was always there you know artist alley that's where i was at i i the celebrities they can i don't i'm not gonna pay a hundred dollars to go take a picture with tom hiddleston or whoever much he is it's probably like four hundred dollars or something But, you know, I was always an artist alley. I, uh, that's how I got to meet Jerry Robinson, who helped Very create cool. Joker, you know, and like, that, yeah. and, you know, Carmen and Trentino and all these great artists and, and writers and, you know, Neil Adams um, actually went to Denny O'Neill's house <laughs> before he died. Wow. And got to meet him. Literally knocked on the door. Uh, don't, I don't recommend it. <laughs> But it worked out. Uh, we sat down for about three hours and talked to me and a buddy. Um, but yeah, it's I, I do miss the the con circuit, as it were. I I've been to a bunch of that. I mean, New York Comic Con is like my favorite because that's where I yeah. sort of cut my teeth. You know, <laughs> uh, San Diego seemed a little bit more film oriented for me when I went the one time that I went, and that, that sort of rubbed me the wrong way um it yeah. seems like people really cared about you know what's the mcu doing in there you know all these sorts of things and i'm like mm-hmm. what comic con <laughs> you know, yeah. if i wanted to go to a film con i go to a film con i'm going to a comic convention i know that it's sort of an all-encompassing nerd culture thing but there, there's a sort of lack of of uh comic etiquette let's say when you go to a convention like a big huge convention like san diego comic-con yeah i'll agree with you i'll agree with you on that i I went to san diego once i think it was in 2006 when uh when snakes on a plane came out and as soon as you walked into the convention center it was just like a giant like half aircraft and all that stuff and i'll agree with the whole like listen it's called comic-con for a reason kind of thing i think um i want to say like new york con maybe like two or three years ago, I rem- I think three years ago, I remember very specifically that they cordoned off like the retail area where like you can actually go and buy your back issues and figures and all that stuff to like the tiniest area of like the show floor and everything else was just like these major like booths. Like it boggles my mind. Like, like why does Chevy need a booth this big at Comic-Con? Because <laughs> they want to sell people their trucks yeah you know I, I, it's it's a weird like and emblazoned on the you know superman logo emblazoned on the side or whatever yeah uh, it's bizarre i do i miss conventions too man like new york new york is always a lot of fun um and also like the, i want to touch on like what you said like the artist alley stuff i think if anybody wants to really shoot the shit with creators that's the way to do it because chances are like you know unless you're unless you're kind of in that 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 like Todd McFarlane like group of guys that has a line like down the block chances yeah. are you can talk to whoever you'd want to talk to and have like a pleasant conversation with them you know? yeah absolutely I Mike Mignola was one of the ones that I, I met it was like maybe it was a Friday but it was early and he had no line so we were just chatting with him you know uh and so you have sort of magical moments like that where you can just talk to the people who make the stuff that you like. I it can't get better than that, in my opinion. Um, and you're right. New York Comic Con definitely has sort of gone the way of San Diego uh, mm-hmm. in recent years. I, I mean, I remember the first year I went, which was the first year. And it was like completely different. Oh, yeah. Completely different con. 
yeah than it is now um it, they definitely have i i feel like last you know, maybe maybe not last year but in the last two years i felt like more and more people had been going to the artist alley but maybe that was just the day that i went or but uh yeah i don't know it's it's cons are weird because it's it's like the schizophrenic thing of like i love it and then there's certain things about them that i just like hate like i was saying how they sort of push the actual medium that they're celebrating to the side yeah yeah there's i mean there's there's a lot i i think everybody has that love hate relationship with any kind of comic book convention like um I I do I do a lot of work with Dark Horse when they're in town and yeah. you know and like luckily I can hang out in their booth and kind of avoid stuff when I'm not like shooting photos for them but you can see like you can see how it will get to everybody you know like just the closeness like all the weird stuff but then at the end of the day you know I don't know about you but like I'll come home with like a backpack full of stuff and just kind of like lay it out and be like be like really like a really happy giddy nerd you know for at least like another week and a half well one of the happiest moments for me was it's stupid but there was so when I was a kid I I really wanted the Batman the animated series two-face okay uh toy and I I like I remember sitting on Santa's lap like mm. in the bank, which is where he was. <laughs> and I was like the start to like a seventies crime movie, and like Santa's in the bank fault. Uh, but it, I, I remember sitting on Santa's lap and like, that was like the one thing that I wanted was the two face action. Uh-huh. And I, that Christmas, Santa delivered, AKA my parents. Mm. Don't listen to those children. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I was so happy. And then I took him with me everywhere. And one day, uh, my parents, my mom took me with her to A&P. Oh, yeah. Store, which doesn't exist anywhere, I don't think. Nope. But uh, I left him in the cart by accident. And, oh, no. And it ruined me. I was like, I was plagued mm. by that forever. And of course, by the time that I had left him, they weren't making them anymore and all that. So, uh, or they just weren't available anymore uh years and years and years and years finally one day i'm at a convention and what is sitting there for like four dollars two face in the box mm-hmm. and i'm like i gotta do this for the child me you know <laughs> I, I oh, absolutely wrong you know so like sort of again like magical moments like that happen because of comic conventions like you, you you're able to sort of indulge the, the child that you were in a way you know yeah, uh, which is sort of the joy of comics in general. I feel like oh, absolutely not infantilize it or anything, but it's there's oh, no aspects of it that you're sort of you exercise. It, we're funny coming from the guy who writes the thing about the guy who shoots himself in the car. But, uh, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but, but yeah, there's definitely there's sort of uh, uh, exercising certain things that you enjoyed when you were a, a kid. You know, cool. Hey, Chris, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. Where could people find you? Uh, well, they can find me on Twitter and Instagram. I'm a little more active on Twitter. You can find me there at, at Christoph Condon, C-R-H-R-I-S-C-O-P-H, Condon. Uh, and you can find us on Patreon, Jacob and myself. Uh, we are patreon.com slash Condon Phillips. Very cool, man. I'm sure you're going to get a lot of emails uh, <laughs> after uh, people watch this saying, hey, Why'd you do that guy show? <laughs> cool. But, Thanks, yeah. man. Yeah, no problem, man. No problem. I, it, was, it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure chatting with you. Same here. That was a lot of fun. Thank you, Chris, for coming on again. I really appreciate it. Um, there's going to be nothing but big things in uh, Chris Condon's future. Who knows? Maybe he'll uh, write that Superman book one day, and uh, we're all going to buy it, and uh, he's going to win 75 Eisners in one afternoon. Um, but stay tuned for more we're gonna have some more guests over the next coming weeks uh we're gonna have some cool surprises and uh as usual we're gonna talk about comic books this show is mainly about comics by the way my name is rich you can catch me at btc rich on twitter and btc rich x on instagram and subscribe to the channel it's on btc rich x on youtube i'll talk to you soon guys thanks for the support i hope to see you soon and hey if you want to let me know what you're reading, leave it in the comments. Talk to you soon.